Sometimes I wonder about my little sister. This one time, my mom had asked me to babysit her, so my little sister and I were sitting on the couch and we were watching a movie. My sister told me she was hungry and you know, she was like two at the time, so she just said chopped words like, hungry, hungry. And so I went into the kitchen to make dinner and then all of a sudden I just hear her scream, a blood curdling scream. So I drop everything, I run into the living room and I'm all like, what's wrong, what's wrong? You know, ready to square up with someone trying to hurt my sister. She just looks at me with this psychotic little grin and then she's like, I got you. Two years old, they usually just say little chop sentences, but she said that so clearly. I was a little caught off guard and, you know, I had just watched some scary movie about this little kid being possessed, so I was a little bit like, what's going on? And I just went back in to finish cooking dinner. Well then, she just walks into the kitchen and she said, Danny, and I turn around like, what? She said, there's a man in the hallway. I, I had never been so scared in my life. I just froze. Like, it was like time slowed down. I ended up just slowly walking into the hallway with a butter knife because that's all I had. There's no one there. Now, I don't know why I'm believing my little sister, but I'm kind of paranoid at this point because, you know, I've heard stories about how little kids see ghosts and stuff like that. I was playing with her and all of a sudden she just stopped dead in her tracks and said, baby, on the wall. I just was like, okay, whatever. I, it was about 3 a.m. and I was studying a little bit late and I heard her crying. I went into her room and then she said, the man in the closet. Uh, and I did not open the closet because I've watched enough scary movies to know that like, you know, you only do that if you have a death wish. So I just kind of grabbed my sister. I'm like, okay, how about you sleep in my room tonight? She's like, I want to stay with the man. She is two. These are the only times she speaks like clearly when she's saying something weird like that. Stay with the man. And my parents, they think it's just normal two-year-old stuff, but one time last week, we were watching Trolls. When they were, you know, put the trolls in, like, the pots and stuff, she just started laughing sadistically. I have never heard such a psychotic and malicious laugh come from a toddler. And then, so spoiler alert, when the trolls escaped and everyone was happy, she just looked so disappointed. I don't know what's up with my sister, but I still love her, though. My best friend, who we'll call Kayla, wanted me and our other friend, who we'll call Lily, to come over for a sleepover. One of the things we did was watch a bunch of nursery rhymes for kids. I don't know why, but we were watching them anyway. One of them was about a mother cat and her kittens, and the kittens had done something naughty, and the mother cat goes, Meow, 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 you shall have no pie. And Kayla stops and she goes, Danny roams the house to like 3am singing, meow, 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 you shall have no pie. And Lily and I look at each other like, that's creepy. Because Kayla's little brother, Danny, is adorable, not creepy at all. So for him to be singing a song at 3am in the morning is kind of weird. So we decided to make alternate versions of what he was saying. Like, what if he's saying, meow, 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 I just found the knife. Or what if he's singing, meow, 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 be prepared to die. It's morbid, I know, but I guess it was fun to scare each other. Anyways, it was much, much later. Kayla had been asleep, leaving Lily and I to talk. So it's 2am and we are talking about ghosts and things like that. And then we look across the hall where Danny's room is. And it has a baby gate in the doorway, which was open. And we both notice that at the same time. And Lily goes, I'm going to shut that. So she goes over and she shuts and she locks the baby gate. She came back in and we talked for uh, about 10 more minutes when we hear two sobs come from the end of the hall. And then a couple seconds of silence. And Lily and I look at each other like, what? And then we hear the sound of Danny getting up and walking to the baby gate. And we hear him laughing. It's weird for a two-year-old to be laughing at nothing at 2 a.m. in the morning. We're a bit scared when we hear this smash and Lily throws the rug over her head. And I look, Danny has thrown the baby gate that was locked and shut. He's thrown it open with such force that it's smashed against the wall. And 
he just walks out and I flop onto the bed and pretend to be asleep, even though I'm still watching him. And I watch as he looks around and then starts coming towards the room we are in. And Lily and I, we're both pretending to be asleep and we're just like, oh my God, this baby is possessed. How did he do that? So he comes in and he just goes to Lily and he just lays down with her. And we talked for another hour, keeping Danny awake to make sure he was not possessed. And then when it was time to go to sleep, Danny decided he wanted to sleep with me. So I had to sleep with a maybe possessed two-year-old for the rest of the night. About a year ago, my great-grandmother died. Everyone was pretty devastated, especially my mom, who was really close to my great-grandmother. A few days after funeral, we saw a dime on our kitchen table randomly. I didn't think anything of it, but the moment my mom saw the dime, she started crying her heart out again, as she had been doing the past few days. I asked her why she was crying over a dime on a table, and she told me a story that if dead loved ones wanted to try and communicate with living relatives, they would leave dimes around the house for them. I immediately started thinking about paranormal things I've seen on YouTube, and I guess I found it pretty cool. And honestly, I found dimes everywhere. That was actually starting to creep me out a little bit. Like, I went to my friend's house, and there was a random dime sitting on her bed. As I went home from my friend's house that night, I told my mom out loud that I was starting to get a little bit creeped out by the, all the dimes. And the moment I said that, the dimes never showed up again. Which creeped me out even more because it's as if she was hearing me say that I didn't want the dimes around anymore. And she listened to me. But then, other than the dimes, I also was pretty creeped out around my own house. I was sitting at my computer one day. And all of a sudden, I heard footsteps and loud noises from behind me. I turned around and there was no one there. I didn't think much of it. Until all of a sudden, the noises got louder and louder. As if they were coming closer and closer to me. I started panicking, and as they got louder and louder, I ran into my room that was across the hall and slammed the door behind me. I was pretty scared. I have been disturbed since, and I still do miss my great-grandmother. I do hope that she's still watching over me, and hope she knows that I was just a little creeped out back then. And that if she does want to bring those dimes back, she can go right on ahead. I wouldn't mind. Jumped off the cliff and had to swim all the way to shore because the dog chased us all the way to the end. Oh.